Welcome to ASOR's Tutorials for Cultural Heritage Survey. This tutorial will focus on exporting data from an existing Kobo Toolbox project into QGIS. Previous tutorials have shown you how to collect data in the field, either with the Kobo Collect app on a phone or tablet, or through an online browser. You've also learned how to edit that data back in Kobo Toolbox once it's exported. The final step is to actually export that data into a GIS system. So let's return to our main dashboard and we have all of our deployed projects here. Now for this export, I'm actually going to use a sample data set that I created purely from the UNESCO World Heritage website. This is all freely available data and I've just created a sample form with some basic information about each World Heritage Site that's located in Tunisia. So let's select the project. And once we've collected data, it always takes us first to the summary page. Let's select the data and we can take a quick look at the type of information collected. Site name, description, its longitude and latitude, the date of its inscription, and the criteria that was used for its inscription. And then most of these sites also have an authenticity report, integrity, and a protection plan. I've also taken an example photo from Wikipedia for each of these sites. You can see the icon here. You can't actually see the photo, but if you click on it, it'll pop up for you, including the file name. Okay, we're ready to export. Let's go back to the Downloads tab. And for future tutorials, we are going to focus on QGIS. So for QGIS, one of the easiest ways to transfer this data is through a CSV file, which is a basic table format. You can select advanced options if you like, but usually the default settings will work perfectly fine for you. If there are some of the questions that you don't wish to include, you can just highlight here and unselect. Okay, once we're ready, we'll select export. And down below, you'll see the progress and then finally a button where we can export the data. Now I do want to mention that sometimes this will not appear if you're on a tablet or a phone trying to download the data. This process is best done on a desktop. So we have the type of file, which is a CSV. When this download was created, the language and other information, including if we want to have subset of groups when we download it. So all we do is just click download and we'll have the download appear in my browser. Once that's done, you can just double click. And here we go. So one thing to note is that Kobo separates the data by semicolon. So you'll see in this top very A1 field, we have the site name, description, longitude, and all these are separated by semicolons and housed within quotation marks. So all of your records will be within these first few columns. It won't be kind of a standard table where you think site name would be in column B, description column C. Um, this is just a way to um, reduce the size of the file. So let's say you have a huge data set. This will make the file size smaller and easier to transport. But keep in mind this uh, separation of semicolons when we get to the QGIS tutorials. As I mentioned previously, you can also download all of the media attachments or the GPS coordinates. So if we go to media attachments, now we have this dialog box here. We select new export. This may take a while because these files are a little larger than just our CSV data. Once that's done, we have this file name. We just click on that and it will download a local zip file to your computer. And just for a quick sneak peek, 
let me show you how to add those Kobo points to a QGIS project. Now we'll go through these steps in much more detail in the QGIS tutorials, but let me just show you very quickly. We go to layer, add layer, add delimited text layer, which is the CSV. And we find the file on our local computer by selecting these three dots. We've added it. And once again, notice here that we have the semicolon option selected. If we had just regular CSV, we cannot select the X or Y field, which is the longitude latitude. And therefore, QJS could not find where to place these points in space. We also see the sample data is not showing up and the add button is grayed out. So we pick custom delimiters under file format and semicolon. And then now we see that the longitude and latitude appear and we can even check out our data a little bit down here. We add that, close. We'll just make these a little larger. And now we see our points. Thanks for watching this video. As a reminder, you can access all of ASOR's tutorials for Cultural Heritage Survey using the URL located here at the top of the page. Hope to see you again. Goodbye.